buying more things you don't need when it comes to creating content online. In this video, I'm gonna try to convince you otherwise and don't buy it. Let's, let's jump into it. Stop buying what you don't need. This is the goal of this video is to put a mindset in there for you that you can start to analyze things a little bit differently. So previous video was all about getting into content creation. Say you are starting a new business or say you have had a business for a while and you want to get going with online content creation and you're in that process. I made a whole video step-by-step -step approach of how you should be approaching it so you can invest into equipment rather than spend it aimlessly. But in that video, I didn't talk about the things you don't need and how we waste a lot of money buying things we don't need. And trust me, I've, I've wasted a lot of money. I'll make more videos about this stuff. Don't worry, it's coming. So hit subscribe and you will enjoy the ride of the money that I have spent that was wasted. So anyways, that being said, link of that video is below. So please check that out. In this video, I'm just gonna run you through some of the mindset that occurs when you are looking at buying equipment and you're growing your equipment arsenal. And what do we usually do? We're getting into the content creation, we don't really know 100% what we need. So we start watching all these creators and all these people talking about gear. And we start to look at all the different things that we want to do in order to get to where we envision ourselves with our content. And then uh, we end up spending a lot of money instead of investing it wisely. Now, when you're going through the process of buying things, you should be looking at your workflow and you should be looking at what do you want to create and eventually get there. So do a growth approach based on what you have. But what we end up doing is we go online and we look at all these different things people are talking about and then we go that would work for me that's what I want to do and then our goal becomes buying these things that people are advertising to us in a way that would be good for us but it's not our workflow it's not our specific thing that we need right now and we could be buying other stuff that would be better and all the time I see this where people will be like hey I bought xyz and I hardly use it yeah because you didn't need it you just saw somebody doing something with it and you thought, hey, I'm gonna be able to do that and my quality will go up because of it. So the first thing we want to do is look at it and say, how does it affect us? Specifically us and our workflow to make us better and by what increment? Is it by a lot? Is it by a little bit? And how does that fit our budget? Because a lot of those things are gonna cost money and you gotta look at your budget and say to yourself, what is it that I really need in my kit in order for me to produce something great for the success of my content online? Now, let's take a step back here, ask yourself why you're doing certain things. A lot of people will go buy the most expensive gear and they don't really need it. And then they say, well, why did I buy that? I could have bought this or the next camera will come out and they'll be like, oh, I should have waited. And it's like, well, you needed it now but you went for something that you may have not needed and then you realize it was a waste. Now, the other thing that is gonna happen is you're gonna go out and buy stuff because you see somebody that says, hey, this is great, you need this, and the reality is that you might not need that expensive one. But the thought process here becomes you need something that's similar in nature. And then you look at the budget that you have and you go, well, should I be spending that much money? An example of this, man, these. NVD filters. Now, these filters go on your camera and when you're outside, you can literally spin them and they're like sunglasses and literally they uh, go dark. And then you can open them up again and you can see through them and it allows you to film outside nicely so that you can be good with all the sunlight that's coming through into your camera and you don't have to like you know fiddle around too much with your settings it also helps with photography for certain types of photographs etc cetera, etc cetera. and the reality is that you know at the beginning we go cheap and sometimes it's not worth going cheap and it's worth going expensive however expensive means expensive on one end and secondly you're just starting out so you're going do i really need to go that route and usually what will happen, you'll see this big creator talk about this awesome thing. And, you know, if you look at like, you know, the uh, Peter McKinnon uh, NVD filters that are like 300 bucks a pop kind of thing. And you go, should I be buying that expensive? Now, this is Canadian prices, of course, but, you know, and, and, and you start to put in perspective and you start buying all these little ones. And. Um, yeah, it's great at the beginning, but then you start realizing there's some issues with your video or you see certain aspects in your photography and you go, oh, maybe I should have went for those other more expensive ones. 
And then what do you do? You eventually spend that money anyways. And now you're spending double the money in some cases with all these, like I have dozens of these. Okay. And you spend so much money when you could have just went out and bought something that was expensive or more expensive. And you could have just been, you know, good to go with the more expensive kit. And then you don't have to upgrade again. Now, the idea with these, I have a couple of them. I'll do a review on these ones that came in. They're the free will magnetic ones that everybody is going crazy about. And honestly, they've made my workflow a lot easier for me. And they're great. Uh, they're a great kit. But the question just becomes, did I see such a big of improvement? I'll be talking about that and the issues that I found. However, the idea is in that video when it comes up, I'm also going to be talking about how you can still purchase these other no-name brands for like 80 bucks, 50 bucks, instead of four or $500, and it'll get the job done still. It's just that mindset that you need to sit there and go, it might not be the best one, but it's getting the job done. And that's where we are leading this to. These things can break. If they break, I'm okay with it. But when the uh, free will broke, I was like, oh, I just bought this thing and I cracked it already, you know, and it was like, you know, a jab in the heart. So was I getting the job done with the cheaper ones? Yes. Did I need the more expensive one? Well, I, I, I went into it and I spent way more of my budget than I thought. And I treated it as an investment to buy the R5, the R6, you know, two big lenses that were $3,000 a pop. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, all right, you know, like I might as well get something that is top quality to meet the uh, camera and the lenses that I bought. And now I just sit there and I go, Mm, I spent so much money on these and I'm not even using them again. Same thing goes with all the different uh, smaller lenses that I have that I've purchased over the years. And I could have just went and invested my money into the better glass and been done with it. Uh, but again, we don't know where we're going with our workflow. So we need to make some concessions in that way. Another aspect of this that you would be wanting to look at is when we're prioritizing certain things over others, when we should be looking at what is the reality of what we need in terms of how we are purchasing things. So in the previous video, I talked about that workflow and what you need in upgrading. And there's other aspects of small things you'll be buying along the way that you're going to need. Example is something like a bag. And this is Oh, I moved it. And this is something that will occur. You'll go buy one of these Amazon uh, low price bags, like the USA gear. Now this one was a good one and I have purchased the Amazon ones, but um, this one has served this time very well, but the material is getting really, you know, inside, not as comfortable for me and my liking on protecting my gear. And we often forget this because the reality is that you're not going to go out every single day and use your gear uh, if you're doing certain types of content, like for your business and you're in a studio like this, but when you do take it out, then you're like, oh, how am I going to protect my camera? And often it's the case, you'll go buy a $30, $50 bag. And then when you drop your bag or one of the uh, stitching gets loose and it falls and you start to cry inside because you paid a lot of money for a camera, things start to get into perspective. Now, one of my favorite bags is this one right here. It is a six liter awesome bag by Peak Design. I have the attachments here so I can clip a camera on here. And I got to tell you, I use this more than anything. Now I do have the heavier uh, camera bags that I'm going to be doing reviews on that I use for my big shoots where I carry everything with me. But when I'm out and about, or I'm just going to do something for a customer where they're like, hey, I need this type of video where I need you to do some shots of me, do a little bit of a, the building. I know I'm only going to bring one camera to do this and, and get the job done and do some photography. I'm going to bring this. And this I've used more than anything else. I love this thing. It's great. I wish it was just a tad, tad, tad bigger, but you know, it is what it is. And the idea is that I throw this on and I can throw anything in here. It's, it's awesome. So um, the, the thought process is, well, that costs like a, 130 some dollars or whatever it was here in, in Canada. And you start to put this in perspective. Like I bought the same kind of a bag, but an Amazon one for like 30 bucks. And now I put my lights in there because it got just too thin and I, I'm not worried about my lights breaking, but that's if I go on a shoot, I have something to protect my one light. So um, taking a step back and thinking about this, there are certain things that have to take priority and you got to put this into perspective of an investment for the future because you have all these bags now and you've spent all this money and like you really, when you bump it up and you get something more expensive, you're like, is it protecting it? So when I put my camera in that USA gear bag, I don't feel comfortable at all, at all. It, like, it's just kind of like I walk around going, oh, what if something happens? And this is something that we got to think about of things that we uh, look at as maybe not important 
And then when we start to look at the idea of the long-term investment of upping our gear, how is that gear going to be protected is an example of that and saying to ourselves, well, how can I justify it in terms of an investment rather than a spend? And at that, I'm going to leave it with this idea so that you can start thinking about different things that people are coming out with and talking about. I have another video of a similar topic where it's about stands and, you know, uh, looking at it in terms of what kind of gear do you want to hold your camera with? And I, uh, you know, I found myself in this dilemma of buying a Joby again that broke or not buying a Joby and the idea of what would I be buying? And it's this aspect of what about used and buying something that's used because there's a lot of people that buy stuff like you and I, like what I just described, and then they don't need them and then they'll sell them. And a lot of the cases, they have times they haven't used them. And I've done that with a Joby before. So it's like, huh, let's talk about that aspect. So you can start putting things into perspective as you start moving on acquiring more gear. My name is Nikos. Leave your comment below. Have you dealt with uh, gas gear acquisition syndrome? How did you defeat it? Or are you still in that zone and buying stuff like me? And of course, uh, check out these two videos.